In this video, you're going to work with complex and imaginary numbers, and we're going to talk about what exactly are imaginary numbers and how to add them and subtract them and multiply them and divide them. So let's get started with this video. The first thing you want to know is this right here, the square root of negative 1, we call that i for imaginary. Now we know when you take the square root, like if I say what's the square root of 16, we say what number times itself is 16, that's 4, right? But if we say what's the square root of negative 16, what would that be? Well, we can't say uh, 4 times 4, that's positive 16, or negative 4 times negative 4, that's positive 16. So how do we take the square root of a negative number? That's where imaginary numbers come in. Now, another thing you want to know about this notation here, i, is that if we square both sides of this equation, i squared is equal to negative 1, because when I square the left side and the right side, the square and the square root cancel, and you're just getting negative 1. So these are uh, good to remember right here. But when I simplify a square root that's got a negative in it, what I like to do is split it up into two parts. Square root of negative 1 times square root of 16. The square root of negative 1 is i, the square root of 16 is 4, so altogether I would write this as 4i. Okay, now a complex number, what's a complex number? Well, it's part real and it's part imaginary. And it's oftentimes written in this a plus bi form. The a represents the real part and the bi represents the imaginary part. And this is called the standard form of a complex number. So all these years when your teacher was saying 3, it was implied that it was 3 plus 0i, that there was no imaginary part. Or if you say, let's say 2i, like... Uh, this is an imaginary number, it's really 0 plus 2i, but we don't oftentimes write the 0. But this is what a complex number is, part real, part imaginary. So let's get into some of these examples. This first one, say we want to simplify the square root of negative 48. Well, what we can do is we can break this down. We could say negative 1 times the square root of 48. So square root of negative 1 times square root of 48. That's the square root of negative 1, we already talked about that's i. 48 we can simplify into square root of 16 times square root of 3. That's 48. And square root of 16 is a perfect square. That's 4. So if we rewrite this now, we can write it as 4i square root of 3. And that's our final result. Now sometimes students will mistakenly put the i over here which you could do, the only thing is that it's oftentimes not written that way because it looks like the i might be underneath the radical. So to kind of avoid that confusion, we usually put it up uh, in front here. Let's look at number 2 now. So this one, we have square root of negative 3 times square root of negative 15. Now, a mistake that students sometimes make is they just multiply these together and say, oh, that's the square root of 45, and simplify from there. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to split this up into square root of negative 1 times square root of 3, and square root of negative 15 is square root of negative 1 times square root of 15. Square root of negative 1 we know is i, and this square root of negative 1 is i. And so i times i we know is i squared. Square root of 3 times square root of 15 is square root of 45. And now we know i squared is equal to negative 1. And the square root of 45 is 9 times 5. 9 is a perfect square. That's 3 times negative 1. This will give us negative 3 square root of 5. If we just multiply these together and say square root of 45, you're going to get positive 3 root 5. So you want to make sure you take that square root of negative 1 out first. Okay, for number 3 now, how do we simplify this one? Well, we can see we've got that i squared in here. i squared is negative 1 times 3 is going to give us a negative 3 minus 5i. Now we can't combine these because you've got an imaginary and a real number and they're two different types of terms. You can kind of think of i as like a variable, like x or y or z. So you really can't combine a number with a variable if you're just adding or subtracting. They're unlike terms. You also want to make sure you put this real part first and the imaginary part second in this a plus bi standard form. Okay, for number four now, we're adding two complex numbers together. So again, just like we said, i can be sort of thought of like a, as like a variable, like x or y. And you can think about just combining like terms. So we could say 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. 1i plus negative 5i is negative 4i. And that's in our standard form of a complex number, real plus imaginary, or a plus bi form. 
Number five, we've got the same two complex numbers, but we're subtracting this time. What you can do is you can think of this as like a negative one and distribute that negative one into the parentheses. So this is like negative three plus five i. And now all we have to do is combine like terms. Two plus negative three is negative one. One i plus five i is six i. And we have it in the standard form of a complex number, real plus imaginary. Let's take a look at a few more examples. Okay, for number six now, we're multiplying two complex numbers together. You can see they're side by side with nothing in between, so multiplication. And here again, you can think of that i as like a variable, like x or y. And so we have like a binomial times a binomial. We can do the FOIL method or the box method or the distributive property twice. Here I'll just uh, distribute twice. I'll do two times three, which is six. Two times negative five i is negative 10 i. Then I'm gonna distribute the i, so i times three is three i, and i times negative five i is negative five i squared. Now we know over here i squared is equal to negative one. So we have a negative one, i squared is a negative one, times negative five is positive five. Here we have negative 10i plus 3i is negative 7i. Bring down the six, and again, combining like terms, six plus five is 11 minus 7i, and we have it in that standard form with the real number first and the imaginary number second. Okay, for number seven now, we're dividing. And when you're dividing, you don't wanna have i in the denominator. That's considered improper, just like you don't wanna have a radical or a square root in the denominator. So what we do when it's a binomial, like two terms like this, we multiply by the complex conjugate. What's the complex conjugate? If you have a plus bi, you multiply by a minus bi, or if you have a minus bi, you multiply by a plus bi. So you just change that sign in between. So here we're gonna multiply by two minus i. Whatever you do to the denominator, you wanna to do to the numerator, because that's like multiplying by one. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to multiply these together. So five times two is 10. Five times negative i is negative five i. In the denominator, what's interesting is the inside and the outside cancel. We have two i and negative two i, that's zero. So we just get two times two, which is four. i times negative i is negative i squared. i squared is negative one, times this negative is a positive one. So that becomes four plus one which is five, so we have 10 minus five i over five. And you don't wanna leave it like that, you wanna split this up into two parts, the real part and the imaginary part. 10 divided by five is two, and negative five divided by five is negative one i. Okay, so you've got it in the standard form, real plus imaginary. Now, here I did a little bit of a shortcut where I did the inside and outside cancel, and then I just did the first multiply together and the last. If you don't like that method, just distribute twice. Distribute the two, then distribute the i, and you'll see the cancellation that occurs. Okay, for number eight now, we have a monomial or just one term in the denominator, but we still have that i in the bottom, which is considered improper. So how do we get rid of this i? Well, here we can just multiply the numerator and denominator by i. i over i is equal to one, one times anything is not gonna change the value, it's just gonna change the way that it looks. So eight times i is eight i, negative three i times i is negative three i squared. i squared we know is negative one, a negative three times a negative one is a positive three, so we get eight thirds i. Okay, good, and then for number nine and number 10, this is what I call i to a higher power, like, you know, instead of just i to the first or i to the second, it's like i to, to a higher exponent. And you can see i to the 27th, the way I like to do these problems is I like to divide out groups of two. So what I mean by that is you could write this as i squared to the 13th power. See, because power to power you multiply, two times 13 is 26. We need one more i, so let's multiply it by i to the first. Now the reason I do that is because i squared is negative one, right? And negative one is easy to work with. A negative one times a negative one times a negative one, like 13 times, a negative to an odd power is gonna be negative, and then times this i is just gonna be negative i. So it's an easy way to simplify. Some teachers explain it where it repeats, like here I'll show you, i to the first, uh, they say is i, and then i squared is negative one, and i to the third is 
uh, negative i, and then i to the fourth is equal to one, and then it repeats i to the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, nine, 10, 11, 12. I find this to be a little bit easier, a little bit less to memorize. So for i to the 60th, let's do the same thing here. Let's see, two goes into 60 30 times. See, power to power, we multiply. We know i squared is negative one, but a negative number to an even power is gonna be positive. So this just comes out to positive one, and you simplified it. So great job if you're able to follow these examples. If you want more practice and you wanna test yourself, follow me over to another video I did on the same topic, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing complex and imaginary numbers. Check out that video and I'll see you over there.